this is Chavi Balotia, Assistant Professor, Biani Group of Colleges. Today I am going to deliver a lecture about the theories of development on behalf of GuruKPO.com. So let us all begin. What is a theory which is related to development? Basically it tells about the development of an organism from the zygote stage to the embryo stage or the fetal stage which we observe. Basically from zygote to the egg at the time of hatching. So basically this is the, these are the theories which were given about the developmental stages of various organisms at from the time of they were zygote to the time at the time where when they were born or they were like hatched out from the egg. So these are the theories which are relating to the development of a fetus basically. So here let's begin with their classification or their division. This division is no hard and fast or given by someone. This is like a division which helps me understand. So I am sharing it with you. Basically I have divided these theories into two types. One is historical. The others are experimental or an analytical which were based on the experiments or analysis of various scientists. These are historical theories which were given before the 19th and 20th, 18th and 19th centuries. These are historical because they were not based upon like uh, any observation or any kind of scientific experiment. However, they were a result from repeated observations which were occurring in the nature naturally and were analyzed or studied by various scientists at that time. But they didn't have any microscopes or sophisticated instrumentation. So I like to classify them as historical theories. So what is the historical theories consists of. So basically I have divided those theories which were a little haphazard or didn't had many scientific or many experimental proofs in the historical and the other which was strictly based on analytical and experimental approaches are classified there. So let us all begin with historical theories. The number one theory which comes under the historical theory is the theory of preformation. In this theory, the theory deals with preformation. Preformation of what? formation of zygote. What happens before the zygote? Zygote se pehle kya aata hai? So zygote se pehle we have ovum and sperm. This theory stated that the gametes or germ cells are the miniature organisms and when they fuse together they start to develop into a complete adult or fetus which was basically not based on any other experiment or anything. This was just scientific uh, scientific or we can see ancient text which describe the germ cells as the powerful cells or anything. But we can see that there is a bit of parallelism here because uh, we say that now the genetic material is inside the germ cells which when combines result into the formation of zygote and then into the fetus. Whereas they said that there is a miniature organism inside the germ cells or inside the uh, gametes and when they fuse they start to develop. But this was not entirely true. So hence next came the epigenetic theory. This said that the level of development is a gradual process. No organism can develop directly or there cannot be no mini, there cannot be a miniature human which when fuses with the other ovum starts to develop into an organism. Thus they said that the gradual process starts from a cell. Cells become tissue, tissues become organs and then the organs result into the formation of an organism. This was suggested by epigenetic theory. Also again was not based on many scientific proofs or any scientific proof that was done into this direction. But this was a gradual observation or this was a general uh, observation which was applied into this to nullify this theory. Next came the Bear's law. Of course given by Bear. He is also called as the father of modern taxonomy because later he done he has done remarkable work in the field of taxonomy and embryology and developmental biology. Here Bayer has said that the taxonomic characters or the characters which are of the taxon that are classified develop start to develop into the organism first. For example, we are mammals. So what are the specific characters of mammals that would start to develop into our body first or that would come across into the, our developmental stages first.
Biani group of colleges, yes, where you can trust. And then the specific characters, such as brain or the eyes or eye color, will develop later. First, we will have the general characters, such as vertebral column and other characters will be occurring first into the development of zygote and later the specific species character will be occurring. Last we have this biogenetic law also I have classified this into the, uh, here because it was based on parallel observations or anal not any kind of experiment that is why I have placed it here. Biogenetic law states that ontogeny repeats phylogeny that is the developmental stages of an organism sort of represent from where it came. We all know that life started as we life has started from a single cell organism. Same when we study the developmental stages of any organism, it, sa it starts from the single cell that is the zygote. So, they say that the ontogeny or the development of zygote to fetus repeats the same procedure that has occurred evolutionarily for the formation of that particular organism or that particular species. This is uh, very very like correct because in many cases we have observed this. Next we have the experimental or analytical theories these are completely based on experiments. Here we have the mosaic theory. Mosaic means a collection of small pieces to form something big. Here we say that the zygote has divided its cytoplasm into specific characters specific zones and those zones are responsible for development of a particular area or particular cell or particular organ. Here we have divided the ooplasm or the zygote plasm into various other zones which are responsible for the development of a particular area or organ. Next came the regulative theory. This theory was given by rocks. Then the regulative theory stated that a specific area which is responsible for the development of a specific thing or specific organ or tissue whatever cannot be responsible solely. There will be other things which will regulate it. Regulation means the extent is modified. That is what will be formed is not formed by the regulatory being such as we have the regulator of a fan. Regulator does not re determines whether the fan will be switched on or off. It just determines how fast the fan will move. Similarly, mosaic theory stated that a specific area is responsible for the development of a specific organ. Regulative theory stated that yes, maybe a area is responsible for development of a specific organ, but the other cell or the other environmental factor is responsible for regulation of the speed or the extent at which that organ will be formed or that particular structure will be required in the body. This is regulated by other cell or other part of the, of the zygote cytoplasm. Next came the gradient theory. Gradient theory also is related to these two theories. The gradient theory stated that yes regulation is there, but there is also a gradient which specifies that how much and how what extent of an cell or what extent of concentration do we need of a specific cell or a specific tissue or a specific chemical in our body. It determines the anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral surfaces of the body. This gradient specifies where and how the structure will be developed. Next came the germ plasm theory. Germ plasm theory stated that the cytoplasm of a germ cell is responsible for all the hereditary and all the functions of the fetus. Next came the organizer theory. This was given by Hans Spiemann which we all know has done a remarkable work in the field of developmental biology. Hans Spiemann specified that even after being responsible for the development of a specific organ, the area does not get induced on its own. There is an organizer for it. The organizer induces the development of that area that yes, you have to form this and you have to form that. That is already predetermined. What is the role of organizer here? Organizer just induces that yes, you have to start the development or you have to start this a next chain of events for the proper development of the organism. He did this in the um, zygote of frog. He basically isolated the Henson's node and other areas so that he could observe what exactly was playing the inducer or the organizer in the animal from which the other structures were being 
um, formed. So he stated that there is an organizer or there is an essential structure which basically stimulates or induces the formation of other structures and other regulatory events in the formation of a zygote. So friends that is all for today. Thanks for watching. Thank you and have a nice day. Please like, share, comment and subscribe the Guru KPO channel.